Now, for more insight into the bilateral ties between China and New Zealand, I spoke to Anka Patel. He's co-founder and chief investment officer of R Squared Macro. I started by asking him about the significance of Prime Minister Key's visit to China. Well, for, for New Zealand, China is now, uh, has overtaken Australia as the largest trading partner. Uh, and that's really happened over the last couple of years. Until 2013, Australia was the largest. But most of the growth since the FTA was signed, the free trade agreement was signed in 08, has been attributed to China. Now, as you mentioned the free trade agreement, there's been a lot of optimism both from China and New Zealand about laying the framework to upgrade the free trade agreement. So why do you think there's a need for it now? Well, from New Zealand's side, they're certainly trying to increase uh, their exports of uh, dairy and meat. And China is actually an excellent candidate for, for, the, for those two goods, primarily because China's middle class is growing uh, tremendously so, and, and, and that will continue over the next couple of years. Um, and then on the other hand, tourism for New Zealand is vital, and to the extent that you have a growing middle class, that could be another area uh, where New Zealand could benefit from. And is there anything that do you think might perhaps hinder the free trade agreement going through? Yeah, I mean, I think there are certainly some controversial topics. I think if you look at what happened with Australia's uh, recent visit to China, the South China Sea was a point uh, of a focal point, and it was a point of contention. Um, and that certainly could hinder the political discussions around that, could hinder the economic uh, discussions as well. Okay, so, so a little bit of influence there from, from politics stepping in. Now, let's also look to some of the key areas of cooperation. What are some of the sectors where New Zealand and China could really move forward? I mean, I think dairy and meat uh, certainly could benefit the most, uh, but we've already seen a tremendous amount of progress on, on those two areas. On the good side, I think on New, from New Zealand's perspective, uh, the prospect of having Alibaba uh, open up its platform throughout New Zealand could be actually a very alluring prospect for, uh, for New Zealand goods. And then I think longer term, really, it's tourism. So that will boost the services sector for New Zealand and then better capital flow from China to New Zealand. Those could be some of the biggest channels uh, over the next five years. Now, what about the reaction to closer ties between New Zealand and China? How are the business communities reacting? I mean, for the most part, New Zealand is very, very keen on having stronger ties with China. I think New Zealand had a little bit of a setback last couple of years because of, of, um, uh, of really issues with their dairy production. Um, we saw a little bit of a crisis occur in the dairy sector from New Zealand's perspective, and that undermined the trust that China had in New Zealand. I think to the extent that we can regain that trust, you'll see better flow of exports uh, from New Zealand to China, which uh, the New Zealand community is very keen on. And as you mentioned, dairy being a key export for New Zealand, especially for, for the Chinese market. Now, looking ahead, what do you think are some of the risks to the dairy industry, especially since it has such a dependence on China's consumers? I mean, you're absolutely right. Over, uh, you know, about 50% of, of the dairy uh, and dairy type products from New Zealand are exported to China. So if China were to you know, stop uh, uh, really importing the dairy products because of perhaps trust issues, the quality control issues, things like that, that could be a major blow to New Zealand. So this, the ball's really in New Zealand's court at this point uh, if New Zealand regains that trust uh, long term just because of the growing middle class in, in China, I think New Zealand stands to benefit a tremendous amount. So I think uh, really from New Zealand's perspective, if we remove tariffs, uh, any remaining tariffs over the next couple of years, uh, then that dairy production will flow very freely to China. And Anka, let's also look at some of the sectors that could be affected by China's economic restructuring. Will it still be agriculture or are there perhaps new trends on the horizon? I, mean, I think New Zealand is, is actually um, a little bit of a, of a bright star in the sense that Australia, uh, in a lot of that trade between China and Australia was around iron ore and mining. Uh, and since New Zealand is primarily involved in the soft, so dairy and meat and things like that, uh, New Zealand um, really hasn't had that much of a blow from China's uh, focus away from infrastructure uh, and towards uh, really uh, consumption. Um, that, that trend away from infrastructure to consumption, New Zealand will benefit from in a, in a dramatic way. Uh, as I mentioned, um, more meat consumption, more dairy consumption, but the added benefit of tourism from Chinese tourists would, would be of huge benefit. And as you mentioned Australia, we also see that Australia's Prime Minister just recently wrapped up his trip to China. So given the timing now of, uh, of New Zealand's Prime Minister's visit, what do you think that means in terms of competition for these two countries when it comes to investment and capital from China? 
Yeah, I mean, I think, I think right now that, that is a very touchy subject, uh, primarily because Australia is expanding its exports in the agricultural sector. Um, and, and really that's now, ter it's, it's getting on New Zealand's uh, really area of, of specialty. And, and to the extent that uh, both countries are, com uh, are, are competing for agricultural dollars from China, um, there could be a little bit of a rift between the two trading partners, Australia and New Zealand. Um, but again, I think there's plenty of capital from China that could flow to both areas. So I think it would be, it would be in the best interest of Australia and New Zealand, just given their size, that they negotiate simultaneously with China for the best uh, trade deal that they can get.